Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to take a look at determining stellar radii. Determining the size of stars, the physical size of stars. And of course, in the universe, when we measure things, we tend to measure things in terms of the angular size. How big is, does it look? Like the moon is about a half degree in angular size. If you measure the moon from the top to the bottom, it makes up a half a degree. If we were to take a look at the sun, for example, let's say there's a star the size of the sun, and we place that star at a distance of one parsec, which is 3.26 light years. Now, there's no star that close to us. The closest star to us is, of course, Alpha Centauri, which is about 4.3 light years. So if we take a star like the sun and we move it just one parsec away, which is closer than the closest star, the angular size of the sun would be 0 0.0093 arc seconds. And that's a very difficult measurement to make. And so the, star, the sun is not a small star. And putting it that close, it still is a very, very small object. So measuring the physical size of a star is very difficult to do. And ultimately, what we're interested in is we want to know the diameter of the star so we can then find the radius, which is, of course, half the diameter. So how do we do that? Well, there's a number of methods. Three of the more common methods are what we call interferometry, making direct measurements like that, but with more than one telescope at the same time so we can make as accurate of measurement as possible. Sometimes we use what we call lunar occultations. When something goes behind the moon, we measure the amount of time it takes for it to disappear behind the moon, and we sometimes can figure out the size from that. Or we use what we call eclipsing binaries, which is usually re the, really the best way to do that. In a lot of cases, stars exist in two or three uh, groups of two or three, which, which we call binary stars. So whenever there's more than one star in a solar system, grouped together where one circles around the other or they both circle around the center mass of, of each other, we can then say there's a binary star system. And if the line of the star system is in such a way that they, when they pass one another, they're in the direct view from us to the stars, then they will occult one another. One will cover up the other. For example, the small of the star sometimes will go in front of the big star and sometimes will go behind the big star as it goes around like this which means we can actually watch it disappear behind the star and slowly over time the star will move behind like that and we can measure the time that it takes for it to do so. At the same time, and when it comes over on the other side, it'll start reappearing again. So we have what we call a light curve that changes. When both stars are visible, the intensity and the luminosity of both stars will be at a certain level. Once a small star begins to disappear behind the big star, the total luminosity will drop until you only see the luminosity of the big star, which is less than the luminosity of both stars together. And then when the star begins to reappear on the other side, the luminosity begins to increase again and goes back to where it was before. If we can measure the star's velocity, the radial velocity, so we, we watch it over time and day after day after day we watch it move through the sky and we can then figure out how fast the star moves as it goes around. Another way we can use to measure is as it's moving in a direction away from us and towards us it's either red shifted or blue shifted and by using the equation as follows the velocity is equal to the speed of light times the change in the wavelength divided by the original wavelength we can use this equation to determine the velocity of the small star as it goes around the big star. From that, we then of course know that the distance covered is equal to the velocity times time, and we can measure the time that it takes for the small star to disappear behind the big star, this is called T1, and we can measure the total time it takes from this point to that point, which is T2, and from those two time measurements, we can figure out the diameter of the small star and the diameter of the large star by simply multiplying the velocity, which we determine this way, times the time that it took for the small star to disappear, or for the total time of the occultation. So in that way, we can actually measure indirectly the diameter of stars. And we've done so for hundreds and hundreds of stars like that. Once we know the diameter of the star, we can then also figure out the luminosity and the temperature independently, and from that we can learn more about each star. But again, finding the stellar radii, the, the radius of a star, is a very difficult thing to do and takes a lot of painstakingly uh, measurements over time to get that to somewhat of an accurate value. But you can see, it can be done, and we do so, and that's how we determine the radius of a star.